Hello, this is Clint McDonald back for another Visual Basic tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to continue with database development and we're going to look at the basics of starting out with drag and drop database data binding. And this is sort of a misnomer in the industry and one of the things that I want to make people aware of before we go too far is that in commercial software development it is very rare that we actually use drag and drop database development. Drag and, drop, drag and drop database development is typically used for prototyping and getting things done really quickly. Be warned that unless you really know what's going on under the covers, using any kind of a wizard or a drag and drop technique that Visual Studio will automate tasks in the background often adds uncertainty when you need to customize things and to do things on your own. So I'm going to show you these techniques. Um, because they're very helpful for getting things done really quickly. However, just be warned that if you're trying to learn and become a programmer, these techniques are typically not done in commercial software. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to look at drag and drop data binding. We're going to look at binding some basic controls to a SQL Server database, um, which means going through adding a project data source to a project, um, there are six things that happen when you create a data source, and we'll look at each of those six things. Specifically, look at the XSD file, which is an XML uh, schema file, and then how to quickly change what we get through some filtering and sorting. So let's get into it quickly. What I have going on here is I have a tutorial project, which I created in tutorial 16, where we had a database added, we ran a script, and we have a basic Halloween database, which has some costumes and some, um, and some categories and etc. in it. So we're just going to bind to that right away. The first thing I'm going to make sure that you understand is that if you haven't watched the previous tutorial, you should, and that we've already, we already explored the server explorer. So we're going to look specifically at the categories table to start, which has three fields in it with the category ID being the primary key. So where we're going to start off with is we're going to create a combo box which basically allows us to choose a category and then we'll have a list of products with, from within that category. So in order to add the list of categories from the database to the drop down, through the drag and drop method it's fairly simple. We're going to look at the smart tag here. By clicking on the smart tag here uh, we can use the data bound objects now. So if we use a data bound item and then a data source, we can see that initially there are no data sources in our project. Even though the database file is there and we're running SQL Server Compact, uh, there are no data sources. We have to create them as we go along. So we're going to go ahead and add a project data source. Now be warned that we only want to do this once. Um, and I'll show you why a little later on. But for now, just, just believe me. So we're going to say add project data source. We're going to say which data source type it is. We're specifically looking at database data binding. So later on you'll learn that there's service based for web APIs and object based which are for custom objects you've created and SharePoint objects as well. But we're looking specifically at databases. You don't have much options for the database model so you pretty much have to choose data set. So we'll go there. You have to choose which database you're going to connect to and in this particular case we're going to choose uh, tutorial 16 which is the local database file in our project and we can see that by the pipes here we're saying our current database um, executing directory so we'll go ahead and say okay we're gonna save this connection string I like to use dbcon but everybody has a personal preferences we're gonna save that connection string so we'll say next um, oh we're just for now we'll just call it two. I think I have one in there already. So we'll, sa we'll save that connection string. And then you can see that up comes the list of tables. If your connection string actually, f if your connection to the database actually failed, you won't see the screen. And you go back and check your connection string is accurate. Um, but for now we know we want the categories table. And what fields we want to include. Now the rule of thumb here is when you're first creating any data adapter, data source for instance, you want to choose all of the objects, okay? Um, and you want to choose them in order and go from there. This is going to create a data set, so we should give it a name here. And don't name it based on the table, because we're going to reuse this database for everything in the database. 
So we are going to call this Halloween, which represents our database itself. So although we're looking at the categories table, we want to have the data set being generic because multiple tables will share this data set. So data set Halloween, finish this. And what this does is it starts to go through the process of what the data source configuration wizard does in setting up that um, data source and everything that goes associated with it. When you complete that uh, wizard, there are six things that happen. We're going to look at each one very quickly. You can see right away that there are three objects at the bottom of the screen here that got created. Here's DS Halloween, which is the data set that we created. We named it that throughout the wizard. And then there's two other things. There's a categories binding source and a categories table adapter. Without going into a lot of detail, the long and the short of it here is the table adapter control um, contains the commands that you're going to run against the database. So for those of you with some experience with databases, you're going to run SQL Server commands like select star from table, etc. And the table adapter is what, where that information is stored and what actually executes those commands. The data set is where that information is stored after the, after the table adapter runs and executes the commands. And then once it's stored in the data set, the binding source will take the information from the data set and bind it to a specific control on the form. And if we look at the smart tag here, our data source is now the category's binding source, which will automatically be linked to the data set Halloween. And after the table adapter runs, the data set Halloween will, control, will contain our list of categories from the categories table. For a combo box, you have to set the display member and value member. So we're going to go ahead and set the display member as short name and the value member as category ID. Typically, your value member will be the primary key because typically you're looking at relating this to other tables and fields. And so you need that primary key, foreign key relationship set up for you. And But you don't want your primary key, especially if it's an auto number type of a, of a identity field where it's the n number means nothing to the end user. So the display member should be the uh, what you want the end user to see. So in this thing, we want the name of the categories as the dis what's displayed in the combo box. But in order to relate it to what products are in that category, we need the category ID as our value that we're actually going to use for those database relationships. So we have that set up. So of the six things that Kurt created, there's three of them right there. The fourth one is within the Solution Explorer, you'll see it created a XSD file um, called the same name as the data set that we created. So if we open that file quickly, you can see this looks very similar to a UML based class diagram that you may do through the design process. And it and in fact it it's almost identical to one. Um, but it's not. This is a this is a schema layout for how the application is going to connect to the database and know what it's doing. So you can see here quickly we have our categories table adapter. All right. Here are the fields within it. And then within the bottom section are the methods that that table adapter uses in order to um, get the information. So if we look at what's called the fill of the get data methods here, if I right click and say configure, you can see there's my SQL command that's going to go and get all the fields from the categories table. No sorting or filtering, but there it is. We're going to get it. So we can go ahead and see that that information is in there. So that's the fourth thing that got created. The fifth thing that got created is if we go to the project properties, remember how we created a connection string? Well, I'm going to delete the one I had in here already. Um, but it, we created this connection string. So there's the connection string. We have our type connection string, application scope, and there's the actual connection string itself. I've expanded out, you can see it. So and it has a relative directory path so that it will work no matter which computer we're working on that particular day, if we have version control or source control set up. And so that's number five of the six things that got added. So we'll save those properties. And the last thing that got added is in the code file within the load event, it actually runs that fill method that we saw. If you go back to the XSD file, we have this fill method. It runs this fill method from the table adapter class and it takes the data set 
running the categories data table and stores the information. So the table adapter uses the fill method to place the results of the select statement into the categories data table of the of the Halloween data set. And that's how that works. So let's just quickly run this and see how that works. So as we go through it, the build typically takes a little longer the first couple times you run it because the SQL Server Compact has to start up with that. And there we go. We have a successful list of, of costumes. So let's look at this quickly. Now they're already in alphabetical order, so let's sort them backwards. So let's very quickly see how we can do that. So if we go back to the XSD file here, and within the table adapter area, we can actually add additional table adapters. And the reason why our first fill method we wanted to choose all the fields is because as we have multiple different versions of that uh, request, you need the main one to have all the fields and with no constraints on it so that future ones can actually work nicely. So if we say add query here, we can use SQL statements. In the future, you'll learn that most of the time we actually want to use store procedures to prevent, um, for security purposes, to prevent SQL Server injection attack. For now, for learning purposes, we'll use SQL statements. We're going to choose, we want multiple rows returned, and we're still doing select statements. So that's the one we want. And then here, we can just modify our SQL. If you're not comfortable writing SQL, you can go into the query builder and have more of a gooey, WYSIWYG uh, type of way of developing it. I know SQL fairly well, so I'm actually just going to type in what I want. And I want to order this by short name, and I want it backwards, so I put the descending clause on that. So when I say next here, you can see that it now gives me the option to actually name my methods. So I didn't actually filter this at all. All I did was uh, order it by short name uh, descending. So I'm just going to name it appropriately. So when I'm using these methods, I know which one I'm actually doing. So I'm going to give it that name. Next, you can see it generated the fill and get method within that select statement. And I finished that. So now I have multiple table adapter methods um, that I can use. So if I save that XSD file and close that up, within my form load event, I can change that fill method to be fill order by short name descending. And all it is is just going to use that different SQL command that I had. So if I start and run this project now, will take a second to come up but you can see now the categories are actually sorted backwards so that works out fantastically in the next tutorial we'll look at adding multiple tables and when relating one table to another and more specifically we'll load products that are within the categories that we that category that we choose so let's conclude there thank you very much